Hello everyone. Hello, hello. How are you all doing? I believe you're doing good today. Good day to all of you all over the world. I am back. My name is Lola Shironke. Welcome, Brother Paul. Welcome, welcome to the platform. Good to see you here. Yes, I am broadcasting from Kiev, Ukraine. Hello, Francis. Welcome to the platform. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Yes, blessings to you too, Brother Paul. We have John Okoro on the platform. Wonderful. Tawanda Godfrey is on the platform. Welcome. Good News Outreach Ministries is here. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Gladys is on the platform. Haro Isen Oshia is on the platform. Welcome. Ori Moloye Emmanuel is on the platform. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Rahu Kamar is on the platform. Welcome. Oh, my cousin Ulumuiwa Adebajo is on the platform. Welcome. Arifi Arifi. Thank you for joining us on the platform. Wonderful. Well, since I already have this going on, welcome. My big sister Julia is on the platform. Welcome, welcome. I am glad to see all of you. Uh, today's topic, of course, is a biomass mentality. And we have been going through a journey. Uh, we started off by talking about what biomass is in general. You know, it's, uh, it's cells, it's a group of cells that make up organs, uh, can be used, uh, biomass can be used in different forms of energy, can be produced from biomass. And uh, we see, we're going back to the beginning, to, you know, how did we get here and who are we? And last week we learned that, yes, we are, as human beings, a form of many cells, but that doesn't define who we really are. That just talks about scientifically about our beginning. And so we found out last week that we are created in the likeness and in the image of God. So even though we start off, according to science, as a biomass, the difference that we have is that we have the breath of life after God created us. He breathed into us. The Bible tells us we were made out of clay. And uh, after he was done, he breathed his life into us. So last week, we learned that we are more than a biomass. So this week, we are going to be looking at what is a biomass mentality. And to be honest with you, I have never heard those words coined together ever before. Until I met my mentor, Dr. Sunday Adelija, who I'm with here in Ukraine at this time. And when I first heard this word, biomass, your biomass, you know, you think like biomass most of the time, you, you know, it was just talking in general about people. I thought, wow, you know, that does sound a little bit degrading, like, mm, Nah, I don't want to compare myself in that way. So what we are going to do is we're going to look at the reasoning behind this description. So first of all, what I would like to do, since this is one of these kind of topics whereby you could feel little or belittled, but that's not the intention. Actually, the intention is to wake us up as people and take a good look again at how we were created, why we were created and who we are. So let us begin. So what I'm going to do for all of you and for many of you on the platform is I'm just going to try to put a little cushion. You know how you have this chair, it's so hard and you just want to put a cushion on top so you can sit on it and feel comfortable. So I'm going to try to introduce this topic to you <laughs> by giving you a little cushion uh, somewhere where you could just adjust yourself and get ready for the ride. So I would just say <clears throat> that the biomass mentality 
quote unquote, is actually not all our fault because we were all born into this system of biomass mentality. We were all born into the world. So we all came into, even Jesus was born into the system of the world. And you know, if you look at the story of Jesus, he was even born at a time that there was uh, moving around that they had to do, you know, from one place to another to keep him safe. You know, so we're all born in this system. We look at Herod, you know, he, he, he was threatened about the birth of Jesus. And, you know, he, he wanted to go out there, find out about him and what was going to be happening to him. So he could go get him and make sure that he doesn't become this king of kings. You know, so we are all born into one system or another. So really, you know, the biomass mentality is not all our fault since we're all born into the system. Now, the biomass, uh, the percentage of biomass one gets at this stage, the stage from being born to maybe high school, maybe to college, that stage of biomass, it actually depends on the percentage that our parents, our guardians, our teachers, our friends, our colleagues have learned to accept to do and demonstrate to us. And the percentage of biomass that we use, accept from our friends, our family, our parents, without asking questions, analyzing or researching the information that we receive and use it to make decisions in our life depends on what kind of biomass information or what percentage of it one gets. So we grow up with different amounts of biomass kind of thinking, which of course is just due to the fact that every world, every place has a system that it runs in. Somebody is always leading and many people are following. So that's part of why we can grow up initially with the biomass mentality. So we're going to look at, <laughs> we're going to look, I hope that explanation was good. What I was saying is that the amount of biomass mentality actually depends upon how we grew up and those people that we grew up with, how much of it did they give to us and how much of it did we accept to make decisions on our life with. So that would be the, to the degree of biomass that one would grow up with until one realizes that one can discover research, ask questions, think deep on many things that we want to do. So the biomass definition, I would like to say that, let us take a look at uh, what a person looks like with biomass mentality. So I'm gonna give you a few descriptions of the kind of uh, characters or aptitudes uh, that one gathers from um, a biomass mentality. So this person with a biomass mentality is likely to do everything it takes to be accepted in his society and his environment. Actually, the, the attitude sometimes is like keeping up with, for example, the latest fashion, the career uh, change that everyone is moving into, a new lifestyle that people are uh, adopting at the present time. So it's just a natural thing for a person with a biomass mentality, mentality to just want to be, you know, keep up with society and the environment that he or she lives in, you know, so that they won't be the odd one out. And also too, you know, simple things like uh, having a brand new phone. It's not like there's really something with the one that you have, but hey, you know, all of us, uh, we seem to be earning the same income. So if everybody's getting a new phone, I can also afford it. Why can I get a new phone? These, uh, uh, the latest car, um, uh, um, are more important, um, they're more important to have those things because those things actually make us feel happy. 
you know, getting a new car, getting a brand new house. I mean, I know how exciting it is when you're just building your house or when you're just buying your house. I mean, you keep talking to everybody about it and you get everybody all excited, wanting and desiring to have the, you know, that kind of thing too. So we tend to spend a lot of importance on all these kinds of things that we want because in a way we feel like this is the way to be happy. I mean, we've worked you know, for long hours at the workplace, we've earned an income. I mean, we should have things that make us feel good. That, oh, you know what? I'm just not doing all this motion for nothing. And if that's the reason why, if we're just doing those things because it makes us feel good and we see other people that have done it and they also feel good and that's the only reason why we are doing all of this, that's a little sign to tell you that that gets into the biomass mentality. Also, a biomass mentality is when a person lives only reacting to stimulus or instance like pain, pleasure. And, and that just becomes the whole reason for life is to be happy, to, to have pleasure. And then when things are not going right, and then we get hurt and we feel pain. So it's either something is going to make us happy or something is going to make us unhappy, sad. So it's like, it's almost like we only have two choices in life uh, to feel depending on, <laughs> depending on what happens to us. So that kind of mentality that life is just about either you are happy, you either have to be happy, 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 or if you're not, you're going to be sad, sad, sad. Those uh, kind of uh, things are what we uh, consider, coined in the, world, uh, in the word, bio-mentality. Also, this person would mostly try to look good on the outside, but really, that person is empty in the inside, unsure of himself or herself, afraid to express his or her opinion in the public or speak up um, on something that may be, be offending them because the appearance doesn't really match up with the inside. So the appearance looks like confidence, looks like happy, looks like contentment, looks like, uh, you know, what is coming out of you is truly, you know, what you mean. But actually, the, the look is just a look. It's not who the person is. It's not who the person is. It's just, you know, a putting on a kind of look so it can just be, nobody can notice the inside. Nobody can question, you know, something is a matter. You know, but just to put up a look, to just cover up the inside, the, the hurting side of a person. And that's why sometimes, you know, if you remember when Jesus would talk to people, it's amazing how Jesus talked less about the outside of a person. But when he spoke to people and he told them about themselves, it was always from the inside. Because the inside of us, after our clothes, makeup, hairstyle, uh, you know, wonderful suits and all of that, the inside of us is actually us. So a biomass mentality is one that would dress up hurts, you know, sorrows, feelings that, you know, need to be expressed for help, for concern. It all gets covered up because this person doesn't know how to speak up. This person, you know, hasn't seen, you know, or have the confidence to believe that anybody would bother, you know, to know that something is a matter with them. So that's also a kind of biomass mentality. And also this kind of biomass mentality affects everything um, with their friendships, uh, their relationships, marriage, and even at the workplace. You know, they prefer not to speak up because they don't want to rock the boat. <laughs> They don't want to, you know, maybe this job or, or, or this thing that they are doing, you know, is about the thing that gives them, you know, the little happiness that they get. And they're afraid that if they come in, that, I mean, if they, um, if they come out 
with the way that they feel they might lose their jobs, they might lose their friends, they might even lose their marriage relationship because now they have to really come out and really talk about who they really are, which may shock the people around them. So their relationships are usually not very sincere or very true because later on you start hearing things like, this person was suffering from this and then you begin to wonder but why why didn't the person speak out you know we we, we are here we could have helped the person but a, a, a biomass mentality doesn't allow one to be that confident rather it's just about just you know appearing in a way and just let people know you know feel like i am I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay and also people who have biomass mentality the reason why they um usually don't speak up or share their opinion is sometimes because they don't want controversy <laughs> they don't like controversy they don't feel up to debating anything or standing for something that they believe they just don't even want to be bothered with it you know they they think that if they stand up for what they believe you know other people would would say their own opinion and it would be painful it, it would hurt you know and they don't want to feel that pain they don't want to have an experience of being hurt by somebody or they already have had an experience about being hurt by somebody and they've not been able to recover from that so they just avoid any controversy you know anything that's just gonna tilt the bulk maybe change their life at the workplace or change their lives in their relationship they don't go there they don't want to touch it you know so they just remain so that's a biomass mentality when you're in that uh, kind of a mode that's a biomass mentality and also biomass mentality helps us to develop what people usually call self-preservation. Self-preservation is the prevention, the protection of oneself from harm or death, which is a basic instinct in human beings and animals. I mean, it's the way that we survive. You know, we try to say, okay, I am not going to go all the way out for this least I get hurt there and then I will miss out on my peace that I had my my regular life so I'm not willing to just launch out there and do it I would just keep myself in this one place here doing this thing for the rest of my life and I will be fine that's what self-preservation looks like and it's more like an attitude of I'll just follow the crowd you know everybody's doing this it must be good I don't see anything wrong everybody's pretty cool everything is pretty right but you see those people over there that are going out there launching and wanting to fly and wanting to be an astronaut and flying to the sky they're just doing too much as far as I am concerned you know and God forbid those people who are launching out you know happen to be on the rocket that launches from Earth and then explodes in the air before they get to space then it's like oh wow didn't I tell you those people are just doing too much look now They've lost their life trying to trying to search and discover the world. Why can't they just sit down in this earth that they in enjoy their family and just and just be? Don't don't go too far. Stop that. You know. So this is the kind of mentality that you know a biomass mentality is like. Now, they follow. They do a lot of following of what people do. But the problem is they don't. They're not willing to ask any questions about why people are doing what they're doing they're not uh willing to analyze the choices and the thing and the things that they are doing trying to ask themselves questions hmm, i wonder why i'm doing this is this really right is this the way that this should work should there be much better ways of doing this is there really any benefit of what i'm doing they don't ask those kinds of questions they don't analyze their every step an action that they take to make decisions on how they're going to live. They would just rather just follow status quo, whatever the society is doing, whatever is happening in my environment, without being different, without shaking the, the boat, without being controversial, uh, just live as so. That's part of being a biomass, having a biomass mentality. They don't think about, I mean, sometimes I'm sure uh, a lot of you on the platform, every now and then you think about like, wait a minute, I'm, I want to do this particular thing, but wait a minute, who even came up with the idea that this thing should even be done this way, or even it should even be done at all? 
People with biomass mentality don't sit down to ask, like, wait a minute, who even said this is the only way to do this thing? Who are these people? What are their names? What have they done in life to be able to dictate to us that this is the only way that we could do something? And we have seen people who have taken a decision and said, I'm finding out about this thing. I want to get to the bottom of this. Really, really, is this the only way that we could do this thing? Or do we actually have to do this? Or can we actually do this in a much simpler way, in a much profitable way? Biomass mentality doesn't allow you to think like that. Doesn't allow you to even want to go there at all. You know, just let everything just remain the way that it is. Don't touch it. Don't rock the boat. We're all doing fine right now. But the interesting thing is that in this life today, it's about 1% to 3% of the population of the world that is dictating human lifestyle to the remaining of us 97% of the world. Excuse me? Just 1% to 3% of the world people are making decision for the remaining 97% of the world? That's something to think about. Like my tribe people, Yoruba people will say, wait a minute, that person doesn't have two heads. They have one head like mine. They have a brain like mine. How come they get to get up there and start directing the affairs of the world? Such a small population. So sometimes we need to think, think through. When we don't think through, then we are heading to this biomass thinking, this biomass mentality. And you know the interesting thing about self-preservation is that when you self uh, when you self uh, practice self-preservation, which I have done, you know, I can tell you stories on that. What actually happens at the end of the day that the thing that you are <laughs> the thing that you are preserving yourself against at the end of the day, that actual thing is the one that overcomes one, because self-preservation is a lie. If you're living in self-preservation, one day, this thing that you are, you are preserving yourself against will arise and overtake, God forbid, overtake one. So self-preservation is not a way that we human beings should live. It's a biomass kind of mentality. I can even um, tell you um, a few stories about self I'll just give you one story of self-preservation. Uh, from my experience, like I said, when I was young, I really, I really did practice self-preservation. Like I said, many of us are born into the world system, you know, from what our parents do, what our family do, friends and colleagues. We tend to learn, you know, different things. Okay, let's just keep ourselves this way. Let's, let's be like this. Let's not rock the boat. We want to climb up the ladder. Let's climb up it without being harmed, you know, falling off the ladder and getting hurt is not the way to do it. We just got to climb it, you know, one step at a time, carefully, carefully till you reach the top. So I have practiced that as a young person. But, but in a way too, I looked at self-preservation in a way can help depending on the issue. Like I remember that self-preservation helped me as a young lady to be pure before God because I was like, no, I'm keeping myself. So in that kind of sense, self-preservation to be able to keep up the, the righteousness, the standards, of a Christian lifestyle, something that you expect of yourself to please the Lord that is in accordance with God's will, that's understandable because that has a real value to it. But self-preservation that prevents you from being who God has made you to be, that stops you, that gets you thinking that you are just this uh, uh, a mass of cell, you know, that comes into a system and just keeps on going, just keep on repeating the same old thing, that's when it becomes a problem. That's when the biomass mentality becomes harmful to a person. So one of my stories that I wanted to tell you, apart from the one I just told you was, I remember um, how self-preservation, how I saw the ugly side of self-preservation. And that was in my profession as a nurse. And uh, the school that I went to, I, I was very, very fortunate to have a wonderful director who opened our eyes to many, many things as a nurse about what we are to be doing and what we are not to do. She was really good at ethics and all these kinds of things, practicing nursing. And one of the greatest things that she really did for us, and I never even knew this existed, she actually required us to watch some videotapes on nurses that were being charged in court and going to jail. And I was thinking, wait a minute, 
uh, what? I mean, apart from not in the profession, like if they did something outside the profession, that's understandable. I could believe it. But you're telling me that in the profession, we as nurses, we could actually do things that would land us to jail. I, I didn't understand it until we started watching these tapes. Now, here we have, we have certain drugs that are considered narcotics and there's different systems of getting the drugs. Sometimes it'd be two, you know, nurses signing off. And, you know, now I believe that they have different systems now of accounting for these narcotics, making sure that they're not um, overgiven, making sure that they are not stolen, missing, and they're all count accounted for uh, in numbers just to trace and make sure that everything is, is right. Well, actually, they showed us a case of a nurse who was consistently uh, getting these narcotics. And then they found out that these medications never got to his patients. So they were trying to figure out where are the medications going? <laughs> if they're not going to the patient, where are they going? So what happens is that sign off on the medication go to the room and put the medication in his pocket and go home and go sell these medications. Now, in that particular case that I remember, what happened was that a couple of nurses knew that he was doing this thing. But unfortunately for them, they had said so much about their life that this particular nurse threatened them that if they told he was going to tell on their lifestyle that doesn't represent being a nurse. And so therefore, those nurses, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't say anything. But unfortunately, they signed this thing off. So when the case now came, not only did that nurse uh, get sentenced, but the nurses that kept on signing off because they were trying to preserve their job, their position, their income, at the end of the day, they all lost. They all lost out. Self-preservation is a lie. It will catch up. The very thing that we are preserving ourselves for catches up in the long run. So here you go now. You have three people that don't understand their mindset. They have no idea about the biomass mentality. Not only did they exercise this biomass mentality, this mentality drove them even, we're talking about the system of being in the world and being born. That's normal, growing up and learning all kinds of things and maybe having to relearn them. That's normal, but it is a disaster that you go from bio life to into the world system, into a system that gets people locked up jail. That's what biomass mentality does. It doesn't help people to think through. It just makes people want to just follow the crowd, you know, follow everybody. Let's just do this thing. I will self uh, preservate myself, but then here comes somebody that says, okay, I know what you're up to and I'm going to be doing this and you better not tell because if you do, I'm going to tell on you at the end of the day. It did not work. Also, Another thing about bio, um, biomass uh, mentality, what it does to us as human beings, what kind of character it makes us, is that it makes us a person who never comes to terms with the fact that all the actions that we take are just about surviving. It's just about surviving in our environment or our society. And at the end of the day, that survival uh, uh, character doesn't pay. It doesn't allow us to know. It, it doesn't connect to what we know, that we are created in the image and the likeness of God. It robs us from that benefit. It, it won't allow us to even get there. So that's what a biomass mentality does. Doesn't allow us to know who we are, who created us, what kind of ability, what kind of job and assignment that God is given us to do. Like I said, a bio love mentality allows us to just submit to living our life at, in status, status quo. It doesn't allow us to ever challenge ourselves, you know, um, to think about, to think deeply about what we do in life, to question what is going on around us, 
to ask, what am I supposed to be doing here? To find out what is it that I enjoy doing? What is my hobby? What do I, what am I excited about? We never get there if we, if we have this biomass mentality. We don't want to challenge ourselves. We don't want to try something new. We don't think about, okay, if I discover this, if I find this out, everybody else is doing it the hard way. Now everybody's washing their hands with clothes and, you know, the society has changed. Everybody needs to go out and work. Is there any, is there any um, mechanical thing that I can create so that people don't have to spend all that time washing and drying clothes all, the day, all day long? Can I come up with something? Coming up with something to help humankind. And maybe that is your calling. And so you solve a problem in society. You solve a, pro a problem in your, in your area. Maybe you even solve problems for the world. Why? Because you are going beyond biomass. You're going beyond that. Just, I'm just here and all I need to do is follow and repeat. You're moving on to a level which God is, has prepared us for. Um, bio, life, uh, bio life mentality um, just allows one to go along with the flow of life. And then towards the end of life, you begin to ask yourself such questions. You know, towards the end of life, when, you know, when you're getting up there in age, whatever age that may be, you may begin to ask yourself the, the question, what did I use my time for? You haven't seen anything. You've used your time for doing everything else that, you know, the, the world says to do and being in the system that the world has provided, and then you just ask yourself, what have, been, what have I been using all my time for? Or you ask yourself, um, um, where did all the time go? What was I doing? How did time pass that quickly? Or you ask yourself, did I miss my calling? And all these questions are very, very painful questions, especially when you are asking them at an age that the world considers that you cannot even start again. In fact, at that point, if you have a biomass mentality, you seem to just give up. You just say, it's done. You know, you hear some people, they commit suicide or they try to commit suicide or they just live by themselves. And sometimes the case is the fact that they sat down and asked themselves, what am I worth? I have really done nothing, you know, and then they remember, you know, I really wanted to be a poet. I, I wanted to be a musician, but, you know, I just fell, fell into the system that says, no, don't do that. Go ahead and be an engineer. Go ahead and be a doctor. Everything but what one is called for. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> there is no satisfaction. There is wandering and there is sadness towards the end of life. Nobody. God's intention is not that at all. God's intention is not that we'll just remain on the earth and just follow status quo. He made us in his image and in his likeness. And his image and his likeness, look at the creation. Look at everything in the earth. Look at the sky. Look at the sun. Look at the moon. Look at the plants. Look at the beautiful sunshine. Look at light. Look at nighttime, the beautiful stars. Look at people that you see every day, different faces, smiley faces, different shapes, different characters, laughter, talented basketball players, singers, doctors, nurses, beautiful. God's creation is beautiful. But just following status quo will not allow us to be able to receive the blessing of being made and created in a likeness and an image of God. So my topic was, oh yeah, I, I wanted to also say that. The reason why we miss time and not understand what we did with it is because we're so busy doing life. We never really stop to understand how does life work. There is a way that life works. But if we are busy just doing, just doing, oh, okay, everybody's doing this. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Just doing, doing, doing without asking questions, without analyzing. Just busy doing life. We don't ever settle down to say, how does this life work anyway? And who is in charge of the way my life goes? Is it God in charge of my life? Or has there been an assignment where God says, I give you the freedom. I give you the will. Because I've put myself, I've put myself in you. You have the intelligence. You have the capability. You have the wisdom. But you just need to settle down. 
and find out how I have made you. Settle down and analyze life daily, every moment. Ask questions. Test things out that you think maybe might be a great way, a better way, a new idea. Test it out. The things that are born in you, the things you dream about, the things that you see, the things that you've drawn and said, oh, I would love to bring this to life. God is saying, I've given you the freedom. I have given every man wisdom, intelligence. It is the people who try to settle down and understand that they are principles of life to all men. Like I, like I make the sun shine over every man, even the men that cost me, even the men that say I do not exist. But it is my principle that every man shall benefit from the sun. Every man shall benefit from the moon. Every man shall benefit from who I am in them if they take the time to learn the principles of life. To learn the principles of overcoming yourself, of rising above the levels of cells and begin to inquire of me. Why did I create you? That you become purposeful on the earth. That you be inventors, innovators, dreamers that can bring your dream to life. And I have my signature on your invention. I have my signature on your innovation. And the people of the earth will know that I am your God. That is the level that God wants us to bring ourselves to. And he has provided all that we need to get there. And it's a big question for us on the platform that say, we are a friend of God, we know God. And yet, we have not got to the point where the world bows for us, here come the children of God. Here come the people with the solutions of the problems of the world. Here come the people of great love that you can just see like that. Here come the people of authority, the ones who say they are seated in high places with their God. Here they come, the Daniels of the world, the Josephs of the world. That's who we are. We are not just a bunch of cells. We are, yes, a bunch of cells, but with the breath of life from Almighty God, with the intelligence and wisdom to bring solutions, to bring all kinds of things that are good to contribute to all mankind. The title that I started off with was Drop the Biomass, Let's Be a Human Being. But we've just touched a little bit on biomass. I want to now talk about dropping the biomass mentality. What does that mean? So I'm going to read a few things to let you understand. Let me understand because I'm part of this whole thing. We're all in this together. What it means to drop the biomass mentality. Dropping the biomass mentality means to stop thinking superficially. To stop thinking in a shallow mind. But instead, start thinking deep. Start deep thinking. Start analyzing. Because that is the way that we were created to be. Dropping the biomass mentality also means we should stop daydreaming. 
We should stop having a daydreaming mind, but we should call ourselves into the reality of thought of the now and here. Let us be present in our now. Let us be present here. Dropping the biomass mentality means stop living unconsciously. Stop living, stop doing things and somebody would say, yeah, yesterday you, um, you said this and you did this and you're, no, I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't say that. Well, you did, but the problem was that your mind wasn't there. How many things in life do we want to do and we're not really present? We haven't purposefully planned what we're going to do. So now, let us account, let us learn, let us walk the journey with God on how to account for every minute of our existence. Some people would say, how is that possible? Well, some of us, and I have some people on the platform who are DSA, that is our mentor, Dr. Sunday Adelaja. He has brought us awareness that it is possible because he practices it. We are all in awe the way he accounts for every bit of his time. He never does anything because oh, it's a great thing. Let's go. Let's do it. No. He has strategically put his time together for the things that he needs to accomplish. Many successful people that we see today, that we celebrate, that we love their story, that they're inspiring to us, they put an investment of time. In fact, if you want to check it out, there's something called the 10,000 hour rule. It's on YouTube, the 10,000. They did a research and found out that most of these people that become uh, you know, successful champions, they go by the 10,000 hour rule. That means that you put 10,000 hours into something you will be the best you will be among the best in that area so we should be accountable we should learn the process any way we can of how can we be accountable for every minute of our existence dropping the biomass mentality also means no more living by autopilot living like a biomass. Some of us remember when we did uh, uh, science in school, you know, the cells automatically, they all know what they're supposed to be doing. Everything in the cell knows. Well, it's, you know, it's an auto, it's an auto function. We need to stop living that way because we are beyond biomass. We should stop living repeat and follow system. We're beyond that. God created us beyond that doing the follow, follow system and never finding out the truth about us being created in God's image and likeness, never finding out the truth. God forbid, we will all find out the truth now. We want to know the extent that God has made us. We want to know it and we want to please God. We want his name to be known on this earth. We want people to know that he is children. We will be in the history books. We'll be history makers. And people want to know who is our God. Dropping the biomass mentality also means don't just submit to man's words or systems that they have built up for us to go through. Don't just do that. Like I said, it's understandable when we were young. Because we were born into it, we were just following along. But it becomes a time of accountability where you sit down and think and like, wait a minute. There must be some other thing going on. There must be another way to do this. My mind is telling me if I think hard enough, I'll get it. If I work on it. And look at the electricity. Um, when you read about the invention of electricity, you see how many hours this gentleman spent in the lab because he had a passion, a dream that it was enough for people to be living in darkness. 
It is more beneficial if people could see. More would be done. And more would be, and, and then people would have the ability to, to know where they're going, to see where they're going, to have, and from it came, you know, electricity and, and many things came out of electricity. But this one person put the time in. This one person was not willing to settle for darkness. <laughs> You know, he, he just said, I know we can't bring the moon into anybody's house, but there has to be a way that we could make light. And he sacrificed so much to make that happen. He is a history maker. We still benefit. We benefit from his creation, from his innovation. So we don't have to just deal with just people, what people tell us and the systems they put up. God wants us to discover. He wants us to do some research and use the knowledge that he gives us. Use it to contribute for the freedom of man and the fulfillment of living for mankind. We can do this. We can do this. We are not just biomass. We are made in his image and his likeness. So, now we know what a biomass mentality looks like. Now we know the effect that such mentality has had on humankind, has had on us Christians. Now we need to focus. We need to now make up our minds. Are we just going to live? Or we're going to say, oh, you know what, God? Hmm. Give me an understanding of what you mean that I've been made in your image and likeness. Because I see some people that don't really claim God. I don't know whether they know God because I haven't had a conversation with them. But people say, oh, these people don't know God. Mm, I don't know because I haven't talked to them. But for not knowing God <laughs> and being able to make all these inventions, and creations and innovations are uh, for not knowing God. I think we Christians have a lot of responsibility for us that know God. Then what would God do? What would God show us? What would God allow us to create, to innovate? If they are supposed to, if those kind of people, but they say, uh, the inventor of uh, Facebook doesn't know God. Uh, the computer uh, genius uh, doesn't know God. Uh, you know, this person, they don't know God. Okay. All right. Let's say that that's true. Well, they don't know God and they're doing all that. Yeah, they're asking us the question. Oh, yeah, really? You know God? I don't know God. But I'm, I, I got things that I'm using to help man. You know God. Big question mark. What are we doing? Let's spend our time seeking God and telling him, we appreciate you for breathing your life into ourselves and making us a higher being that we may manifest the likeness of you on the earth. That's where we are to be as Christians. So drop the biomass mentality and let's be a human being. So I'm still going to get to the point, the part of being a human being. That is another whole little something. But what I've been sharing with you so far is just like, you know, a 360 degree uh, circle. It's just 1% or less, probably less of what I've even shared from my understanding of what I've received when I heard about the biomass mentality. But I felt even with this little that I know, there are many of you on the platform, you are also going to have knowledge. You're also going to find out more about this. And if we all can see from different angles of who we are in God and able to share it with each other and with people that we know, I am sure that will be effective on this earth. So all of us doing our own little part of knowing who God is, knowing who we are, knowing who we are supposed to be and how we're supposed to be, I think that we will start, that would be a good start 
for the church to never be the same. Knowing who we are in God, understanding who God made us to be, learning about the principles of life, the principles of the kingdom of God, that's why I say that the church will never be the same. Revelation and knowledge is out here for us. God has given it to us. So I'm going to see who has come on and acknowledge you. And then I will tell you what we're going to be doing next. Let me see if I can move this. I'm going to go all the way to the top. Okay. Wow. Wonderful. Lots of people on the platform. I am so happy. That means lots of people are going to know about this. Okay. I have Francis Uluwafemi. Oh, that's my other name. Welcome to the platform, Francis. Of course, Brother Paul, ever so faithful. Thank you so much for being on the platform. John Okoro, thank you. Good to see you on the platform. Tawanada, Tawanada, beautiful name. Godfrey, welcome to the platform. Goodness Outreach Ministries, I love that name. Welcome to the platform. Brother Paul, you say lovely frame. Oh, wonderful. Yes, this is where I am is uh, another part of the house. Uh, it's just a little center. They were using the big hall, so I just found this place, you know, to use. So this is another another place of one of the buildings. Gladys is on. Har Haron Ian is on. Welcome to the platform. Orimoloye. Orimoloye Emmanuel. Welcome again to the platform. Rahu. Welcome to the platform. Ulumuywa Adebajo, my cousin. Welcome, welcome again. Arif, Arif, welcome to the platform. Uh, we have Brother Paul, he says, uh, <laughs> no, you appreciate it, okay. My beloved sister, Sister Julia Fortune, welcome to the platform. Brother Paul says, yes, ready for the bomb today. <laughs> My big sister, Julia, says, blessing, Lola. Thank you so much and blessings to you. Gladys says, hi, Ma. Hi, welcome. Gift blessing, Amos. Welcome to the platform. Chingwe, good to see you on the platform. Vivian Taylor, thank you so much. Good to be on the platform. Thank you. Chingwe says hello to me. Gip says blessing my hello everyone. She's greeting all of us. Amosa Bakari joined. Welcome to the platform. Oh, Pastor Inkirun. Welcome to the platform. I'm going to see you in a few minutes anyway. <laughs> She says, hi, my husband, oh, he's on the platform, Ladi Shironke. Francis says, you're great. I really enjoy your program. Thank you so much for the encouragement. Thank you. I appreciate that. My husband is saying, hello. Gift is like, hmm, I wonder what that was about. I'll check it later. <laughs> Brother Paul is saying the topic is biomass mentality. Thank you so much for putting that there. Oh, he's calling me Mama Wise. Well, bless the name of the Lord. I have Samson Olugun Nola Ogun. Okay, Olugun Ola. Okay. <laughs> Olugun Ola. Welcome to the platform, Samson. I also have. Oluwa Darasimi. Oh, beautiful name. All these beautiful names. Welcome to the platform. Let's see who else is here. Juan Chuku. Oh, thank God I could pronounce that. My dear brother, you are always so faithful. Welcome to the platform. Welcome, welcome. Ajayi Ameka Ameka. Welcome to the platform and hello to you also. Oh, Mr. Matthew, Bami Dile from Mount Zion. How can I ever forget you? Welcome to the platform and congratulations on your celebration of your birthday, sir. Welcome to the platform. Mfuma, oh, God bless you. Welcome to the platform. Mfuma says, good afternoon and blessings to everybody. 
Oh, we have Dr. Jerry. He is my son's godfather. Welcome to the platform. Your son is grown now. Your godson is 21. I know you know that already. Brother Paul says, I am inferior to no one. Oh, beautiful. Because you are made uniquely in God. Each one of us. There is, God made each one of us unique. There's not another one of us. Ah, uh, I have um, Maras. Okay. I hope that's Maras. Maras. Forgive me if I pronounced your wrong, your name wrong, but welcome to the platform. I have Brother ID, welcome to the platform. I have Frank Bija, Mambi, Mambija, welcome to the platform. Welcome. Gift again. Brother ID says, blessings to everyone. Gift says, oh my God. And we have Godfrey David Oluwafemi again. Welcome to the platform. Sister Kath, welcome to the platform. You're doing a wonderful job with your French uh, program. God bless you. Thank you very much that we are not forgetting the French-speaking uh, uh, countries and people. Thank you so much. Gregory David, welcome to the platform. Yomi Jegede, welcome to the platform. You are a regular also. And Sister Kath. All right, she was responding to something. Oh, Pastor Sunday. Well, welcome to the platform. Nice to have you here. <laughs> I have gift. Gift says, so biomass mentality does not permit somebody to say his or her opinion. Hmm, I never thought of that. Thanks. Thanks, Ma, is what she said there. Ade wale, ade doing. Welcome to the platform. I remember you, yes. Justine, welcome to the platform. Victor Young, oh my gosh, Victor Young, so good to see you on the platform. It's been a while, but you're always a blessing. Welcome, Victor. All right, let's see if there's any new. Oh, Susan Sakuria, all the way from Utah. Oh, wonderful to have you on the platform. Good to see you here. I have Shola Lamodi, Lamodi, Shola Lamodi, welcome to the platform. I have Alan Allen, welcome to the platform. I have Pastor Chris Ogedembe, welcome to the platform. Nice to have you here. Sheyi, long time, welcome to the platform. Eyetola. <laughs> Gift says, I now see more reason of Henry Ford's quotes that thinking is the hardest work. You know what? Thinking is hard work in the beginning. You have to adjust yourself to thinking. It is hard work when you stay, but it's the work that pays the most in life. Not the physical. The physical is emotional. We do that, yes. But we cannot do that for the rest of our lives. So we have to think up ideas. We have to think up innovations. We have to think up systems. We have to create new things. We have to do things in new ways that people, you know, can benefit uh, people for, for, for the rest, you know, of generations. So yes, thinking is hard work. But it's the one that pays off the best. Oh, gift is saying, share, share, share. Thank you so much. Yes, everybody share. You've all done a wonderful work of sharing these for me. I really appreciate it. Gifty or fairy is on. Welcome to the platform. Professor Adeleke, oh, very supportive. I know you very well. Welcome to the platform. I see you often. Welcome. And, oh, a very good old sister. I don't want to say a friend. Teresa Adeyemi, welcome to the platform. Good to see you here. Let's see. Elizabeth Ali, my dear, welcome to the platform. <laughs> Elizabeth Ali says hello to me. Hello. Let's see. Who else do we have? We just have... Okay, we have Brother Paul saying, no way, 
busy doing life. <laughs> Great question to ask is, and this is from Shola Lamoti. She says, Great question to ask is, who is in charge of my life? Yes, it's a good question to ask. Brother Paul says, settle down and get wisdom. Yes, we must. We must also know, Brother Paul says, principles of life. Yes, we must know them. We should not have the knowledge of principles of life stolen from us. Not at all. We need to get them. God has given every man, this is Brother Idi says, God has given every man wisdom and intelligence. Absolutely. Brother Paul says it's about the kingdom. Yes. The signature of God on me. Wonderful. Brother Paul says the signature of God on me. So all of us have a signature of God on us. We are unique. We are not just biomass. We are beyond that. I have Abby, Abby, Ola, me, Ola, me, Puyi. Okay. Welcome to the platform. Good to have you. I have Hope, Olubu, Olubola, Ulubola, welcome to the platform. Brother Paul says, a kingdom-driven life. Yes. Kingdom purpose-driven life. Yes. Intelligence and wisdom to bring solutions to humanity. Yes, that is our calling. Wonderful. Anu Ojo, Ojo, welcome to the platform. My husband, Ladi Shironke, says, to be the next Steve Job, Jobs. Stop biomass mentality. Let's be the next Steve Jobs. Wonderful, yes. Passing Kiru says some Christians have to put have to put back their brains on. <laughs> some Christians have to put back their brains on. Yes, Brother Paul is reminding us about the ten thousand hour uh, rule. Just go on YouTube; you will see. All information on the 10,000 hour rule. Take a look at that and see how hard successful people, champions in the world, how hard they work to get there. That's the kind of work that we need to do. But Paul talks about the accountability. Like I told you, my uh, mentor, he is accountable for every minute of his life. It is absolutely amazing. Everything is done purposefully and planned ahead of time. And of course, the Holy Spirit will have its way, but at least you have you have something down on paper and purpose and purposeful to do. And then Brother Paul says, my brain is part of Christ's likeness. Oh, how powerful. My brain is part of Christ's likeness. I use it too as Christian, as, as Christian for a purpose. I use it too as a Christian for his purpose purpose. My brain is part of Christ's likeness. Beautiful and true. Oh, okay. Kath is saying, great job, Ma. Thank you very much. Charles Solomon, welcome to the platform. Mufama is saying, well, well done, Ma. Thank you. Jude, welcome to the platform. Justine says, great session, Ma. Blessings and love from Berlin. Oh, thank you so much. And, um, let's see here. So, okay. J Jude, uh, Judy, uh, Beko says, kingdom greetings. Kingdom greetings to all of us. Okay, my aunt is on, Joyce Onadikbe. Welcome to the platform, auntie. Good to see you here. Thank you for your support. I appreciate. Oh, my aunt also says, great job, cousin. Thank you so much. And then we have Benny Gift. Welcome to the platform. And then we have, uh, he says, he likes this. Okay, he likes the teaching. So... Wonderful people. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you've been with me. Now, next week, Wednesday, I want you to prepare yourself for something so wonderful. Welcome to the platform, Lin Lin Linus B. Joshua. Welcome to the platform. 
Next week, Wednesday, we are going to have a wonderful time. We are not just going to listen to how we are not biomass and how we are created in the image of God's likeness and uh, God likeness. We are now going to spend some time finding about, finding out about us. I'm going to allow each one of us in our privacy because none of us can see each other, but we know that we are there. And we are going to do an activity. It's going to be an activity based, nothing, nothing, nothing hard, you know, but it's going to be very beneficial. What it is going to do for us is that it's going to let us know how close are we in this biomass mentality. Like if biomass mentality had a chart, we're going to know where we are on the chart. If we're in the middle, if we're, you know, way off the chart, we're not even in it, or if we are just starting, it's going to allow us to know where we are. We're going to be able to do that in wherever we are privately. We are going to be able to find that out. So everybody will have an idea where we are so that we know where to start off with in moving into that direction of how God wants us to be. So next week will be pretty interesting. If you know anybody who is interested in knowing where they are with their thinking and how, you know, it's, we're also going to see how we can, each one of us, how we can um, move uh, to the next level that we need to, the things, the tools that we need to help us to get there. So that will be next week. We will do that before we get to um, be a human being, uh, homo sapien. So we first of all want to know where we are so we know how we how close we we are going towards the way that God has planned for us. So um, invite people for next week. I will do some, some pop-ups on Facebook in my red color, sometimes in black. It's either red or black. And um, I would do that to remind you of what's coming up. So next week should be a very exciting time. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And uh, thank you very much uh, for coming on. I see Chris Matthew just came in. Welcome to the platform. You get a chance to review what we have done. You just need to uh, replay it again. So thank you all so much. I look forward to seeing you next week and thank you all for your encouragement and for your prayers. And uh, I'm very excited that God is really, um, um, you know, uh, making us aware of who we are. Well, thanks again, everyone. And you all have a good day. Bye-bye.